Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Hello everyone and welcome to this act of worship for all ages to enjoy from the Church of England in McGull and Melling. I'm Reverend Simon, the team vicar here. And I say welcome to this act of worship celebrating the good news of Jesus' resurrection and the hope that offers to everyone. Happy Easter to you all. Now, every now and again during this act of worship, I'm going to say those words that I just opened with and put my hand to my ear for you to join with me in shouting the response, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So listen out for that now and again during this and join in. As we start, let's pray. Lord, thank you for Easter Sunday and the good news that Jesus, who died on the cross, rose again and is alive. Thank you that Christians across the world can celebrate your awesome power and the hope that offers to us all. And may we truly know that you are with us right now. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And we're going to sing now a great hymn of Easter celebration. See what a morning, the resurrection hymn. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. 
But as we celebrate the good news of Easter today, we also recognise that we regularly still need to say sorry to God for the things we do, say and think that are wrong. So we're going to take a few moments to do that now, remembering as we do that when Jesus came back to life on that first Easter day, he showed that through his death on the cross, our sins can be forgiven. We can confidently come to God asking for forgiveness. In this prayer, each time I say the words, thank you that you died and rose again, Join with me in the words, so that I can be forgiven. Thank you that you died and rose again, so that I can be forgiven. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we are sorry for the wrong things we have done. Thank you that you died and rose again, so that I can be forgiven. Lord Jesus, we are sorry for the wrong things we have said. Thank you that you died and rose again, so that I can be forgiven. Lord Jesus, we are sorry for the wrong things we have thought. Thank you that you died and rose again, so that I can be forgiven. Lord Jesus, we are sorry for not loving and serving you as we should. Thank you that you died and rose again, so that I can be forgiven. Amen. And today, may we all know the good news that we are truly forgiven by our God who loves us. Thanks be to God. Amen. So as we particularly remembered on Good Friday, Jesus had died on the cross, and his body had been taken down and laid in a tomb belonging to a Joseph of Arimathea with a big stone rolled across the entrance of that tomb. But we're celebrating today that that was not the end of Jesus' story. This short cartoon clip now picks up that story and tells of what we're celebrating today. Three days passed and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body and found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Ah! Don't be afraid, said an angel. He is not here. He is risen. At this, the woman remembered that Jesus had told them that he would rise again on the third day. And ran to go tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. Huh? Hey, oh! Ah! And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. <laughs> he taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! The good news of Easter, the hope God offers to all. As that clip said right at the beginning, when Jesus' body was buried in the tomb, all seemed hopeless, and that must have been so hard. And for many of us, life can be full of ups and downs, can't it? Good times and really hard times, times when we're full of hope, 
and times when things feel hopeless for us for different reasons. The good news of Easter is that Jesus is rising from the tomb brought hope when all seemed hopeless and brought a hope that we can know right now in these strange pandemic times as well as at any time. That we can know right now in all that we face day by day the hope that Jesus cares, the hope that Jesus loves us, the true hope that Jesus is with us right now because Jesus is alive and with us no matter what we are going through. The Easter message is a message of good news, of true hope for us all. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Truly a great day. And we're going to sing again now as we continue to celebrate the greatest day in history. greatest day in history. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. What good news we celebrate today. Good news certainly for the friends and followers of Jesus who were there at the time of that first Easter and saw him alive again. Good news for us all. What did the disciples do? with that good news. What do we do with good news? 
Here's my friend and the slightly mad scientist, Reverend Chris, to help us think about this a bit more. Well, think about when you last heard some good news. How did you react? We tend to tell people. We tell our friends. We tell all those people around us. And that's what the disciples did. When they heard that Jesus was alive again, they could not keep it to themselves. I tell you what, let's do a quick science experiment to help us. So I'm going to use a soft metal, which is called sodium. It's a very reactive metal. And as soon as sodium touches water, bang, off it goes. It reacts. Maybe this will help us to think about how the disciples reacted. So sodium is stored in oil and that's just to stop it reacting with moisture and also the air. So we have our piece of sodium here. It's a very soft metal and what that means is, is that I can actually cut it with a knife quite easily and if I turn that round you'll see that the freshly cut faces are shiny. That's because the metal hasn't oxidised yet. I'm going to put one of these pieces of sodium into a bowl of water. It's a legendary reaction because sodium is such a reactive metal and we'll see what happens. Obviously don't try this at home, but as soon as the sodium hits the water, it reacts. It's off. It zooms around with so much energy. So it lets off hydrogen gas, it produces sodium hydroxide. There's so much energy in that reaction as it moves around. It's a little bit like the disciples' reaction. They didn't just stay in that place when they heard the news. They weren't just talking, they weren't even walking, but they were running and jumping for joy just to share that good news with others. They shared the news and it spread and fizzed about excitingly like that piece of sodium. Those disciples went running to tell others. Good news isn't usually meant to be kept quiet and secret, but to be shared far and wide. And we today know the good news of Easter because those first followers of Jesus and lots and lots and lots of others have shared that news and is spread across the world and over the years to us. And that needs to carry on. That good news of the hope of Easter, of God's love for all, needs to be continue needs to continue to be shared by the church, the followers and friends of Jesus today, by us. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We're going to pray now. And for the first part of these prayers, I'd love you all to join in. At the end of each sentence I say, I want us all to say, nice and loudly, Jesus is risen. Again, I'll put my hand to my ear so that you know to respond. Jesus is risen. And then at the end of this bit, when I say the words, shout with one voice, we'll add an alleluia as well, just because we've not said that word enough already in this service. <laughs> so your response will be, Jesus is risen. Alleluia. Let's pray. What's that you say? Jesus is risen, but he was dead. Jesus is risen, nailed to a cross. Jesus is risen, 
laid in a grave. Jesus is risen, dead for three days. Jesus is risen. Now he's alive. Jesus is risen. Death overcome. Jesus is risen. Hope for us all. Jesus is risen. Shout with one voice. Jesus is risen. Alleluia. Amen. And so, Lord, we do thank you for the good news and hope of Easter. And we pray for all who especially need to know that hope today. We pray for your world, for the ongoing pandemic situation, for parts of the world where there are problems due to violence and greed and injustice and so on, for people who go hungry and don't have the basic things of life that we so often take for granted. We pray especially for anyone who is sick at the moment, including anyone we know. And for anyone who's sad because someone they love has died. And we pray for our own families, friends and for ourselves and anything that is on our minds at the moment. We pray that we would know that you are with us right now and always, Lord. Thank you for the hope of Easter. Amen. Thank you, everyone. I hope you are shouting that Jesus is risen nice and loudly. And we're just going to sing together now before a closing prayer this great hymn for Easter. Thine be the glory, risen conquering sun.
Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thank you, everyone, for joining in this worship for Easter. I hope that you've enjoyed the cartoons, the songs and sang along. I hope you enjoyed the science. And most of all, I hope you've heard the message of the hope of Easter and truly know that. May we go into the rest of this day and the week ahead, truly knowing the hope and joy of the risen Jesus and the hope and life that he offers to all. Thanks be to God. Amen. Happy Easter, everyone. <laughs>